So that's count. And now general. General is the one that I probably use the most. Just because there are a lot of options and it gives you a lot of control. I think I'm going to use a sphere for this example. Create an herb sphere. Just because I think the results are a little bit more dramatic. So these are the default options. We hit uh, apply. Now that's not the best sphere in the world. Because it's so using per surface number of isoperms in 3D for my U type and V type. So U and V are two, di two dimensional coordinates. If you're familiar with 3D coordinates, so you have X, Y, and Z. You have and you can see down here in the lower left corner, X, Y, and Z for the 3D space of the scene. For 2D space, you have what you call U, V. And there's also, they, they use that for textures mainly, because I don't know if you if you hear about using textures and creating textures, you're talking about UVs a lot. And UVs are two-dimensional coordinates, and we're going to go over all that in future videos. There's also such thing as 3D textures, which we're not going to talk about much, but they're use UVWs just like 3D space with meshes use XYZ 3D textures will use UVW 2D textures will just use the U and V just like a 2D space will just use X and Y and not the Z for depth so 2D space in uh, texture coordinates are U and V now NURBS and get into a little bit of a tangent NURBS are essentially a two-dimensional surface that's been wrapped into a 3D shape. So UVs are pretty important when it comes to NURBS. So let me just delete this and just kind of <laughs> put that information in the back of your mind while I adjust these settings. So for U-type and V-type, instead of using per surface number of isoperms in 3D, you can choose per surface number of isoperms, not the 3D part or per span number of isoperms. And isoperms are what a component of NURBS. You can see if I right click on my NURBS surface, isoperm is a option, which is essentially these lines. And I can click and drag lines along the surface. So when it's saying per surface number of isoperms, it's talking about these lines. Let me go back to uh, object mode here so per surface if I choose the second option instead of in the 3d part hit apply very similar result now if I choose the third option per span number of isoperms hit apply and now we get something we can use so what this is saying is per span we're going to have three divisions in the U and V directions. I'm going to try to explain what that is. This is the by, so I'm going to keep this sphere over here. That's the default sphere with three and three. If I choose the sphere again and choose one and three, we'll get this. Move that over here. If I choose three and one, we'll get this. So you see what's happening is with a number of one, it's keeping the same span count as in the original NURB surface. You'll see there's a line here on this polygon sphere that matches this line on the NURB sphere. A line through the middle, the equator, matches that line. And this line of edges down here matches this line. Let me get rid of that grid. But then I had three for this sphere I had one and three. So one in the U type U number U, one in the number U, and three in the number V. And because I had three in the number V, between each vertical span, it divided it three times. That's why you have a lot more density in the vertical using number of one three. Now this sphere over here used the opposite three one. So the vertical spans or the V are matching the original because they're a one division between the two 
but then the horizontal, or U, had been divided three times between each span. And what's handy about all of this is you have history involved. So if I go back to this sphere, for example, inputs, nerve tessellate 2 over here, if I click that, all these options open up. And you can see that I can change from general, go back to count, for example. And then you have polygon count 25. If I increase this, it will increase the, res the number of polygons resulting, trying to match the number for polygon count, which we've already talked about. I'm just showing you here that you can, even after you've done one, after you've converted, you can go back and change it using history. So if I input, say, 300 for my polygon count, the surface number will adjust faces 300 exactly. If I choose 10, now I have 12. I'm just trying to maintain that polygon count, just like we talked about before, but I'm all con I'm controlling it over here in the channel box due to history. So let's go back to uh, general. So you have U type here. V type and you can choose those three options for your type number U number V so we can still adjust these so if I adjust U number click and drag I can increase and decrease that density this is one reason why I like to use this option is that I can just convert it without really thinking about how many are in the U and V and then go in here and adjust it to where I want it to be for example same over here, if I click this one, whenever I used the conversion it was 3, 1, with U number being 3, V number being 1, I can go and adjust this V number to 2 if I wanted to get this result. So it's, it's pretty powerful, there's a lot of stuff to it. Let's go back to the options here. Now you have secondary tessellation controls here, so you have use chord height, use chord height ratio, edge swap. Now these things, to be honest, you just have to play with them depending on what you're converting to get to see what kind of result you want to get. I hit apply with use chord height and then if I uncheck use chord height and apply you can see the difference in the results. This is with chord height being used with a 0.2 value. This is with chord height not being used just using these values up here. Leave these two. If I use court height ratio, hit apply, get this result, if I uncheck it, hit apply, this didn't really affect much. So it just depends on what you're doing to play with these options here. And I typically don't really use these. I, get, I think I get enough control just using the per span number of isoparms, the third option in the pull down list for both of these, and number U, number V, and adjusting that. Um, and just so you know, you can choose different options based on the number U and number V. You can have the U direction using per surface number of isoparms, while the V direction uses per span number of isoparms. You can mix and match based on your needs. So that's using this, these options in a nutshell. Again, you had triangles and quads, and you had the tessellation method, which is very drastically different between the four options you have available. I like I like the general tessellation method like I said because of these controls they give me a lot of options and a lot of uh, history that I can use to really adjust the shape the way I want it to. But you might prefer count because count is pretty simple. Just put in a number and see what you get. Control points that gives you a lot of uh, future control like you'll you can look at these points and see what you'll get. So that's pretty uh, predictable. Standard fit, this is, in my opinion, very unpredictable just because I'm not very math focused in my in my uh, career choice. So I really don't know what all these stuff, all this stuff really means that much. I just kind of play with the sliders and see what happens. You'll probably might do the same thing. But I like this one here, and that's my preference. But obviously, play with it, see what you like. But that is that is the convert NURBS to polygon options and again these options are seen all over the surfaces menu whenever you're creating lofts and extrudes and birals and so on you can output to polygons 
Here, here's all the revolve options. You have your output geometry down here at the bottom. Nerves are output by default, but you can choose polygons, and it gives you these same settings. Quads, general, same stuff. So just think of this output geometry portion of these options as being their own set of options that are not necessarily associated with, in this case, Revolve. They're just standard options for converting nerves to polygons. And once again, you can find that under Modify, Convert, NURBS to Polygons, and you have your options here for adjusting all of this stuff. So I hope that's been helpful. If you have any questions, if I've missed something, if you, if you know more about that math stuff than I do, and I can make an addendum to this if you could explain it to me, <laughs> I'd be more than happy to do that. Um, if you like this video, if you subscribe, I really appreciate it. If you have any suggestions for future videos that we, I, you want me to go over before, before others, I'm going to try and get all of it in there eventually. But if you have a uh, preference on something I do now, definitely let me know. This has been the Mile Tool Belt for with Michael McKinley. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot, guys.